So today, we're going to be talking about something very near and dear to my heart. And uh, that's, that's funny monkeys. But we're not just talking about any funny monkey here. We're talking about a monkey that could possibly be the smartest monkey that there ever was. He, uh, he's a chimp, technically, but that's besides the point. So for context, one day during class in like early March, we were all assigned an audio project for our basic digital arts class. And uh, the project had to have a theme of some sort. And since this was during the height of my monkey obsession, I, of course, told my professor that the theme of my project would be monkeys in the jungle. Now, it was day one of working on the projects in class, but it was also like the week before spring break, so I really didn't want to do any actual work. But to make it look like I was doing work, I searched up funny monkeys on YouTube, and uh, I just tried to see what I could get. Now, this was the first thing that I found. <laughs> However, the second thing that I found was a lot more interesting. I found this clip from a Japanese talk show. And in the clip, there's this guy, he's playing ping pong with a, with a chimp. And apparently the chimp's name was Pan-kun, which, by the way, kun in Japanese usually refers to men or boys who are younger or the same age as you. It also is quite informal. But anyway, I was immediately just intrigued by the sheer intellect of this funny chimp. Like, he, he straight up learned how to play ping pong in a matter of hours, and he was doing pretty well. He was probably doing a lot better than I would, so I dug further and further into this pen coon hole. That came out wrong. But either way, I found something that I was not mentally prepared for. Konnichiwa! Watashi no nomai wa pan kun desu! The rise of Pan-kun is a very interesting story, one that I would like to take you on today. So Pan-kun himself was born on October 1st, 2001, and he was owned and still owned by the Cuddly Dominion Zoo, which sounds absolutely badass. And also, the zoo sits right next to Mount Aso, which is also a volcano. So this place is metal as hell. From his birth, Pan-kun was trained to be a young star, kind of like, like that movie Most Valuable Primate. Anybody remember Most Valuable Primate? The, with the, the, the monkey plays hockey. Uh, so as Pan-kun grew up, he started to do like daily shows at the Cuddly Dominion Zoo, and he would like do cool tricks and stuff. It was pretty neat. But as he got older, Pan-kun was allowed to roam the streets of Japan go out to the big city and appear on television. While some of his early work shows him, you know, interacting with his trainers and interacting with other Japanese actors, his magnum opus and what I stumbled upon that day on YouTube, it came when he met his young Padawan, James. James was to accompany Pancoon on his missions and learn more about the world with Pancoon together as a duo, unstoppable. He wore this little blue backpack as well so that Pan-kun could, you know, store his valuables. And together, they made the duo known today and forever as Pan-kun and James. So the show itself, Pan-kun and James, was a segment which frequently appeared on two other Japanese shows named Tensai Shimuro Dobutsuen and Dobutsu Kiso Tengai. I probably butchered those, but whatever. So every episode, quote-unquote, of Pan-kun and James revolves around Pan-kun and James having to complete, a, you know, a simple human task. Like, the first episode involves them just, you know, walking down the street to give something to Farmer John. Farmer John's corner! While Pan-kun and James are usually given help in some of the early episodes, by a, by a creepy man. They predominantly, by the end, go on their adventures alone with only each other to rely on. Of course, the cameramen are there to make sure that, like, you know, nothing goes wrong, but Pen Coon is a smart little monkey. Look at his outfit. The overalls, the little handkerchief, iconic. Anyway, this series went on for many years, 
and it grew in popularity throughout the country. And it brought tourism to the, the Cuddly Dominion Zoo, where you could come see Pancoon and James do their shows, as well as buy some sick Pancoon merch. It was pretty sweet. The show was even syndicated in other Asian countries like India, where it was known as the, Ma the, the, the Manabai Show on Indian Nickelodeon. It also got syndicated in Thailand and in Hong Kong, where it was known as The Adventures of Pan and James, Chimpanzee and Bulldog on errands. That, w what else you gotta know? From that title, what else is there to know? Filming went on for the show until 2009, when it finished its run. And after this, Pan Kun and James rested at the Cuddly Dominion Zoo, soaking up the fame and the glory for years to come. Now, I might not be selling it, how cool this show is, just from, you know, just talking about it, but just see, here's a couple snippets from some episodes. So, uh, here, you can see, uh, Pen Coon's just playing some baseball while James sits on the bench and watches him. He's got his cool number three jersey. It's pretty nice. He's hanging out with the boys. He's running the bases. He's doing pretty good at that. And now he's practicing passing. With, with some of the kids on the baseball team. Alright. So, uh... Here they are. Oh, Jesus Christ! Holy shit! Look at this kid. This kid, he almost drills Pan Coon in the face with a baseball. Like, slow down! He's just a monkey! And here's another great episode where, uh... Pan Coon is just trying to set up some pillows, you know? So he can have everybody over for dinner. He's gonna set up the tables and the pillows, and everybody can sit down and have a great time. But uh-oh. Uh-oh, James hit the button. What could the button do, you ask? Wow. Uh-oh. 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 Oh. Oh. Oh my god! Pen Coon, what are you doing? You gotta get out of there! The walls! It's like, oh my god, the cinematic parallels. Stop that wall. It's like Star Wars. It's like Star Wars. Pancoon, get a pipe or something. Jam the walls. Hurry. James is gonna die. He's gonna perish like you, Pancoon. You gotta do something. Holy shit. Oh my duck. Get in there. Hurry. These moments. These moments right here is why I enjoy watching the silly monkey and his bulldog. Really, it is, it is a great show. I highly recommend it. Even though it was made in the early 2000s, it, it's a pretty good run. It's still funny to this day. But, have I ever told you the tragedy of Pen Coon the Wise? I thought not. It's not a story the Jedi would tell you, but on the fateful day of September 6th, 2012, Pen Coon was performing one of his daily shows at the Cuddly Dominion Zoo when he lashed out and he bit a female student trainer. The injuries she sustained from Pan Coon put her in the hospital for weeks, and this became the end of Pan Coon's performances. As Pan Coon let his rage consume him, it frightened and even sickened his partner James. The two were separated shortly after this, and they never resolved their quarrel. Unfortunately, James passed away on March 8th, 2016, as if 2016 couldn't have gotten any worse. This left Pan Coon alone at the zoo, with no more fame, no more glory, as he spends the rest of his days at the Cuddly Dominion Zoo, where he still remains to this day. It really is a shame what happened to Pan Coon all those years ago, and honestly I hope one day that he can have a redemption arc, like an anime. It is Japan, it would make sense. Anyways, I highly recommend checking out this show for yourself. It was never really officially broadcasted in English, but if you look hard enough on YouTube, there are some beautiful people re-uploading the show and adding subtitles for everyone to enjoy. So if you ever get the chance, be sure to give that old pain a chance. His story deserves a better ending. But for now, he shall remain as a predominant figure in funny monkey history. And that, children, is the story of Pan Coon and James.